Hey everyone, Sophia here for my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel and my garden experiment. Today is May the 15th, um, 2021. I am super, super excited because I am getting soil delivered today and you can see on my face, I can't contain my excitement. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are following, you know that I have a vegetable garden. I told you I was not gonna till. I am doing what is called the back to Eden gardening method. I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining to you what it means. Basically, it is going back to the way nature intended to grow. So if you go in the forest, you're gonna see that your trees and your plants and your ferns and all of that grow and you don't need to water them. And if you dig a little bit, even if it's really hot outside, the soil is still gonna be wet and moist. And the reason for that is because of all of the ground cover. That's basically the way the Back to Eden gardening method works. You have your soil, you put a layer of protection, which is basically uh, mulch or wood chips, which I'm getting delivered probably for free sometimes during the week, and you leave it there. Um, you don't till, you don't turn, you just plant directly into this mix, and you really have to leave it alone. You don't water all that much, so you save on water. You get the best of the nutrients for your plants because you did not till. Remember when you till your garden, um, it looks great. You have a nice pliable soil to work with, but you're taking all of the surface bacteria, which is good bacteria for your soil because your soil is alive and you basically bring it all the way down to the bottom where it dies. So eventually you do that over the years and your soil is garbage and you have to use fertilizer. When you do this method, no fertilizer, you just plant your stuff and it's perfect. So what am I getting today? Five cubic feet. I'm getting three cubic feet of a topsoil, garden topsoil that has been screened, and I'm adding two cubic feet of compost, and they're gonna get mixed up, placed in the garden. If I have too much, there's plenty of areas in the garden where I can add soil. I have planters, I have the front, I have the back, uh, I can do another bed if I want to. And once that's settled a little bit, I'll bring in the chips and we'll start planting. So right now, we gotta prepare the backyard, move the cars, put the tarp on the ground, move the uh, hose, and wait for the truck delivery. So exciting. God, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is screened topsoil. This is super, super good quality topsoil. And right here is the compost. Look at this. Uh, I'm gonna smell it. You don't need to see that. Oh. <laughs> so all of this needs to be mixed together. Um, and the reason why I'm mixing it, because if I plant directly into the compost, I'm gonna burn the roots of my vegetables, but yeah, this big pile right here is gonna get moved all the way in there. Right, so it's 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to give you a quick garden tour since we have beautiful sunshine today. Hopefully it won't rain tomorrow. For those of you who watched the video the last time, um, you know that I got big rocks and put them all around. And some of the bigger rocks that you see are actually the ones that I picked up last week. And you'll notice uh, the zucchinis I planted. And I do need to cut my grass. So around 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun starts turning. And then it will basically fill up the whole yard until about 5. And then at 5 o'clock, it turns again. And then this area right here will be in the shade. So we're going to start, I'm trying to go as slow as possible with this here. So those of you who have been 
uh, watching my channel and the garden experiment for a while, you're getting to see things growing. Um, as we go, this is a uh, aster, a purple one that I planted last year, I believe. So it came back as a perennial and you can see there's some buds already. That's the leftover of the daffodils. Uh, if you remember, I moved my chives to two urns because they help with aphids. This is the new rose I planted this year. I'm a little disappointed. It is from Jackson Perkins. This one is a pink piece hybrid tea. It's uh, taking its sweet time to come out, but I'm pretty sure it will be beautiful nonetheless with Jackson Perkins and uh, Austin are uh, some of the best roses. We got some leftover daffodils here. Okay, so here's one rose. Um, this one is the Olympiad. I believe. I did not mark them last year, so I don't remember if this one is the Olympiad or the John Paul II, but we do have a bud here and I'm checking no aphids this morning. Wonderful. Another one here, there's one over there. So all of these are going to grow a good four feet uh, this year. And this is the John Paul II, which is white. The Olympiad is red, bright red. Uh-oh. And this is what I do every day. I go and I grab and I crush aphids. Um, I do have a spray, but I only want to use it if there is a major, major invasion. And even then, I think I'm going to try to get some ladybugs. Okay, here's the other um, chive. I planted my lettuce here. Uh, it's not doing too good. We had so much rain. I do have one coming out and then a couple of uh, red leaf. If you can see those, we'll see what happens. This is the Granny Smith apple. I do have some pollinated ones I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is not pollinated. No apple is going to come out of this. Let me find one that is pollinated. Usually you see a, uh, a bulge. Um, here we go. This one right here is pollinated. So there will be an apple. A couple of apples on this one. I did weed uh, this whole area the other day. And this is where I keep my cold crops. Because um, they are in the shade all the way up to about noon. And then they have full sun and then the sun down. So they're not getting too much sun. And then with the apple tree, I do get some shade as well, in particular in this area. So these are all the ones that I've uh, planted from seeds, by the way, and started in my uh, biodome kitchen. Uh, we have cabbage that's coming out. The whole row in the back is broccoli. In the middle, we have collard greens. In the front, these are the Swiss chards. And the kales uh, from last time are growing. Look at this kale. Uh, they're starting to look really, really pretty. Can't wait. Still some weeding to do over there. Uh, leftover daffodils. Okay, in this urn I have, and you can see them uh, come out a little bit. These are uh, Dutch iris, um, you know, little single ones. And then in the back over there are zinnias that I planted from seeds and are starting to come out. This is um, a divided um, daisy from the other area that I planted here. We have some daylilies, daisies over here. Uh, this is a black eye Susan and the zucchini, which I've started from seed in the kitchen since February. Look at this beauty, that's a male flower. For those of you who don't know, it's easy to uh, figure out. Okay, um, this one over there is a straight, skinny stem. And if you look, I'm gonna try to zoom in. If you look closely, you'll see another one that has a little bulge, is a little bit thicker. That would be a female. So hopefully that would be a zucchini. Uh, about six weeks. Another zucchini here, and a zucchini, and another zucchini. These are Black Beauty zucchinis. So what's going to happen in six weeks is that this whole area here will be entirely covered with leaves and zucchini. So it will go over the grass, and it will go over the gravel uh, in the back. 
These are the allium and they are starting to pop. They are going to be beautiful. Remember, I planted four, only two came out. Don't know what that's about. We'll see, maybe they froze and they'll come back next year. This is the Empire apple tree and this one. Oh boy, are we going to have apples. Look at all these apples in the making. Uh, we have a few, probably gonna have maybe 20, 20 apples. Um, pretty much every grape uh, that had flowers got pollinated. And I'm super happy about that. So we will have apples. This is the bed that I created a couple of weeks ago. In the urn, we have the leftover mint. That's another perennial that's very invasive. Hence the reason why I put it in an urn. Uh, the lemon balm in the big pot is also invasive, so I'll put it in the pot and it will get uh, cut down. This is the plants from last year, so we have Greek oregano here and lemon thyme. I have two of them and they did get trimmed quite a lot before I put them in here. And these are, I'm trying to not have my shadow, these are my plants. Um, that I started from seed. So we have sage in the back, we have some basil here, uh, dill, flat leaf parsley. That's the leftover rosemary from last year. Sorry, looking, not a lot. <laughs> Here's cilantro and flat leaf parsley from last year, which we grew. So this is my little herb garden. And here's the fig tree. I don't see any fig coming out yet, but we do have. Uh, beautiful leaves poking out. In this pot here I have some zinnia that started from seed. Here's more daisies, asters, more daisies, a black eye susan, more zinnias, and two pumpkins. Well, the pumpkins are gonna fill up this whole area here and the pumpkin themselves will be growing on the gravel, keeping them away from dirt and rot. So this is the vegetable garden, which is going to be entirely filled up with soil uh, this afternoon. All of this is cilantro that pretty much volunteered itself to come back. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to cut some, uh, but this is all getting covered today. Here are my two climbing roses. They are doing phenomenal. And these are bought at Amazon. Uh, they are Brex roses. So we have two of them and they are guarding the secret garden. And secret garden, I have two pots here that need to be filled with soil today. That's why I'm not too worried about having too much. Plenty of areas where I can put soil. These are daily leaves from my neighbors, some type of grass from my neighbors. I never remember the name. And these are my neighbors' hostas. And my experiment with um, root vegetable. I don't know. I think I need to thin them. These are uh, turnips. And then we have a volunteer hosta and another hosta all the way in the back. And then on this side, more hostas. Some volunteer hostas I found throughout the garden that I planted here. This one is also a volunteer in the middle of the daisy. Spinach is trying to come out, but I don't think this was the spot for spinach. And then here are the radishes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think this was a, uh, a good spot. So again, this is an experiment. I'm trying to see if I can do vegetables in here. Obviously I can't. Um, they don't look like they're going to produce or be very fruitful. So hostas and daisies it will be. And more hostas and leftover daffodil. And here we are. That's the garden. For those of you who followed me for a while, I'm sure you appreciate the transformation of this entire yard. And it was a lot of work. Let's look at it from this side. It was a lot of work, but it was all worth it. All of it. So you're probably wondering, well, what's next now? Uh, back breaking work is what's next. 
Um, we're gonna have breakfast. I still need to go to Home Depot. We need to get the wire for the um, weed hacker because you saw that my grass needs to be uh, mowed in the front and in the back. The front is really, really bad. I have some um, weeds that are really tall. It looks shabby, I, got, I gotta work. And then I have a, uh, um, a bush that died. So I have to work in the front as well. Um, you know, I mean, I have pretty much all weekend to move this soil over there and then I'm gonna let it sit a little bit. During the week, what I wanna do is paint all the wood uh, fencing, stain it in green. It's called Go Away Green. Other people call it Disney Green. It's basically um, the type of green that makes everything disappear. Like you don't even see it basically. Um, so it's gonna be a stain. I'm not painting it like opaque, but I have to do that during the week because otherwise uh, I have to wait for the end of the season and I don't wanna wait another season. This has been uh, out there. It's treated wood. It's been out there for about a little bit over a year now. When did I build this? Yeah, in May last year. So it's been a year exactly that I've had that wood at in the open, so obviously I can stain it now. So I'm gonna do that during the week, probably won't film, or if I do, I'll put some shots here and there. Uh, the most important is getting the soil mixed and move to that garden area, work in the front. Um, that's what I'm planning on doing today. I'm not planting anything yet. You have to let your soil um, still and stand a little bit before you plant, plus it's still a little cool at night. I don't know if the tomatoes, the, the eggplants would do good, but the tomatoes, I'm not so sure. And I still have new seeds to plant too in that area. The peas, the beans, more lettuce, more mesclam, um, what else? The corn's gonna have to go in there. Um, anyway, it's, it's gonna be, oh, <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, and I have to get the mulch, uh, but the mulch, I get it for free. Not mulch, uh, wood chips. To get wood chips, all you have to do is, uh, there's a wood chip program, go online, free wood chip delivery, and the tree companies in your areas that go around neighborhoods and cut people's trees and then shred them, they don't know what to do with this stuff, okay? It piles up really quickly. They gladly deliver it to you. You just call them and they tell you, well, I can be there and probably sometimes within the week, two or three days, leave your um, driveway open for them, move your cars, put a tarp if you want to, like I did for my soul, because I don't want to have to wash all of this um, away. And they'll come in and they'll dump um, two, three, four cubic feet, whatever, of uh, wood chips, not mulch, wood chips. And that's what you're using for the Back to Eden gardening, you use wood chips. And again, you just open up your wood chips a little bit, plant, and then close around. It completely covers the ground. No weeding, Ugh, no weeding. <laughs> okay, that's number one. Two, it keeps all the moisture and all the nutrients in the soil. And then the following year, you just gotta rake a little bit and then spread it open and plant again and close it. That's it. You never have to till again. So I'm probably gonna sell the tiller at some point because I don't need it. Um, I'm so happy I found this method. I will put a link down below for the major video uh, from Paul, the guy who does, is it Paul or Charles? I think it's Paul, um, who does this back to Eden gardening. And it's a big method that's growing right now. A lot of pe people are going into this in other countries and area, they call it permaculture. Yeah. Uh, it's got different names. It's back to Eden gardening. Basically, it's the way God intended your plants to grow and create in nature. So I'm replicating this and I'm super excited. It is uh, not even 10 o'clock. It's 9.55. This girl needs breakfast and coffee and then we're going to a Home Depot. So I will be right back.
So what I did here basically is turn uh, the soil ever so slightly, uh, and yes, the dogs are in the garden, um, to aerate a little bit. And then I raked it um, again gently so that it's a little bit straighter. And I'm gonna start bringing in my soil. So remember, I got three cubic yards of topsoil and two cubic yards of compost and I'm gonna keep the same ratio so when I use my wheelbarrow here I'll put three and two mix it and bring it in and we're gonna level everything nice and flat uh, I'm definitely gonna have leftover we'll figure out what we do with that when we get there Was a lot of dirt. <laughs> um, it's four o'clock in the afternoon and uh, let's say I got about half of the pile out of the way and this is filled so now I have to level it and the rest of the dirt what am I gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. All right I gotta reseed the front so we're gonna put a lot of dirt on the front including the median and I think I'm gonna fill up the rest of my beds in the backyard. Um, fill it around the plants that are already there because it's good soil um, I gotta use it and then I was thinking about maybe this area right here where I have the gravel just dump it on top of the gravel why not and that way I have a bigger planting area um, but anyway I gotta go and level this baby it's like walking on a cloud Wow, 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 this is like a dream come true, y'all. Look at this. Wow, exactly what I wanted, you see? You gotta start with a vision, all right? And I had a vision that I would be able to do this vegetable garden just the way I wanted it. Sorry about the lawnmower, that would be Scott. Look at this. Is it shaping up or what? Now imagine all of this covered with wood chips and tomatoes over there and green beans over there and cucumber over here and in the middle peppers and eggplant oh it's gonna be great it's looking really good Wow, okay, you can tell me I did not make a serious dent <laughs> in my five cubic yard. I think I moved uh, maybe three and a half uh, with a little bit of help from Willie, but pretty much the rest is by myself. So I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with that. Um, what I did is uh, cover this, remember I had the gravel? Okay, so now I have about eight inches worth of dirt. Ah, defeats the purpose. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remulch everything, but I can put my medicinal plants here and then this you saw already. Um, and the lighting is not great right now because it's, I'm gonna blind you, it's almost sundown. Um, so yeah, this is gonna have to get mulched. And then I filled this up uh, and that's gonna be for, I don't know, begonias, something like that. Um, all of this needs to be filled still. Um, so the dirt is kind of retained We'll see if it lasts. I patched here and there. The seeds that I put in two weeks ago and reseeded after that did not grow. They were too old. So I have a bunch of holes from uh, the dogs digging. Filled that up. And then I put some 
extra soil here. I'm gonna have to fill up all the way in the back um, with fertilizer. Again, this is gonna have to get mulched. And I started putting some here, but I have to be honest, I'm tired. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Uh, so I am done and this is gonna look so good. Don't mind the uh, bags of soil and whatnot. I can still put some um, soil in that garden over there, but I don't know. Um, I'm telling you, this is like walking on a cloud. It's so cool. Um, so tomorrow, I'm actually going to work because I'm on call and uh, one of my staff is on vacation so I have to cover that shift. I'll take Monday off um, and finish this on Monday. I'm wiped out. <laughs> I can't wait to plant. You see you put a lot of effort at first and then it's established and once it's established it's just a matter of planting and maintaining. Um, you know, I mean, obviously I still have to get a lot of mulch or um, wood chips. I don't know which one I'm going to get. Um, that dirt will be used. We put a lot in the front. What happened with the median, which is a little strip that's between the sidewalk and the curb. Um, the curb part, my lips are so chapped. Um, there was a gas leakage problem with the town and they had to do something with our pipe. So they dug up the whole median to reach our pipe and they just, you know, kind of patched it willy-nilly, <laughs> if I might say. And we haven't had any grass on there uh, regrowing. So we covered that. We bought new seeds today. Um, so we're going to seed tomorrow. It's going to rain, which is perfect. Um, so within a month, we'll have green median again. And... That's about it. That's all there is to say. This garden experiment is killing me. I'm loving every minute of it. And Scott bought me beer. <laughs> I'm having an adult beverage on my little garden bench. Which one did you get? Huh? Which one is that? Yingling. Yingling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having an adult beverage. Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so within a month we'll have grass um, in the front again. It would look good and we'll probably start picking some vegetables. So this garden experiment is going very well. It, I'm a glutton for punishment, I'll say it again. Um, I will work myself into the ground, but I love it. I really do. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to protect that dirt that's in the middle of my driveway because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I have another tarp. I guess I'll have to cover it and finish when I come back from work tomorrow and Monday. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the progress in the garden and what I'm doing with it. Um, again, for those of you who've been here with me for a long time, you remember what the yard used to look like and um, I'm sure you appreciate what I've been doing with it. If you're brand new, you're probably wondering, like, what's the big deal? It is a big deal. <laughs> if you remember, uh, if you've never seen the yard um, the way it used to be, go back to old, old videos. It was really pathetic. Um, it was pathetic. So I'm very happy. It's a very peaceful retreat right here. I can't wait for all my herbs to grow and get the aroma from all the herbs. It's going to be beautiful work in progress. Okay, guys, I'm going to enjoy my beer and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Well, good morning. This is an update. Um, yes, five cubic feet of soil has been removed with difficulty, but I did it. I'm going to give you a quick update of what the yard looks like and tell you exactly what I'm going to do with it. So you saw me fill this up and this area right here. I actually filled it up all the way in the back here and over there. And the plan, um, I still have one echinacea and one blue corn flower from two years ago or last year i can't remember um this whole area here and this whole area here which i filled up are going to be seeded with cosmos um they are annuals that's fine um i'll figure out what i want to do next year um this is all filled up you saw that and i needed to figure out what i was going to do with all that soil so i created a new bed 
and we're gonna have a little bit of both shade and sun um, this area here obviously is going to need for me to fill it up in the front here with rocks um, so just like these rocks I have to find rocks again now if you remember I told you that you can't really grow anything underneath a fig tree um, that's not entirely true you can actually put mint rue which is deterrent for cats so we don't want rue um, and marigold and something else so it's going to be right here I'm going to put some mint because we don't want the rue but the other area over there is not underneath the tree so that's fine and then this area here is not underneath the tree and that's fine too I have some volunteer hostess I'm gonna put over here along the edges and in the back I'm gonna put some mint here remember I still have medicinal plants um, elecampane and St. John Worth and uh, fever few so that's all gonna go over here uh, next to my trying to get the light back okay next to my herb garden and then I pulled a uh, soil over everything here as well and this is all going to get mulched, by the way. Uh, so the zucchini are doing pretty good. Early morning, they perk up. So that's looking fine. And then these opened up um, since yesterday or two days ago when I showed you the video. Um, they're going to make big balls in uh, purple. So all of this has been filled up. And here's the vegetable garden for cold crops. Now you see that I filled up this whole area here oops as well um, this is to cover basically the pipe um, so this is all going to be covered in mulch so you won't see it but at least I don't have the pipes anymore the one that goes all the way to the back to drain the garage um, spout and uh, you can really see um, the kale I have one that's looking uh, I have one here that's looking like it could do better but it's not dead yet so we're gonna uh, keep babying it so the kale took on and then the broccolis look really good too and the Swiss chard is coming out broccolis are actually looking really good they must like it here and the cabbage is coming out too so that's gonna look really really neat and again all of this is gonna get mulched and roses still no bud um, I have two salvia. Um, I was going to plant them here because they look beautiful with roses. But since I have a new bed over there, I think I'm going to put the salvia over there. Um, and this is looking fine too. So, yep, that's the update. Let me show you what it looks like from the back because I put the bench here now. I wanted to have a spot where I could see the entire garden so here we go when you sit here this is what the garden looks like and I would say it looks pretty pretty darn good I can't wait to show it to you in full growth in full bloom it's going to be phenomenal so that's my update and I will see you next time thanks for watching hey it's me and guess what click that thumbs up if you really like this video thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.